Now, uh, this debt ceiling, I just want to remind people in, uh, uh, in, in case you haven't been keeping up, uh, raising the debt ceiling, which has done, been done over 100 times, does not increase our debt. It does not uh, somehow promote profligacy. All it does is it says you've got to pay the bills that you've already racked up, Congress. It, it, it's a basic function uh, of making sure that the full faith and credit of the United States is preserved. Uh, and I've heard people say, well, in the past there have been negotiations around raising the debt ceiling. It's always a tough vote because the average person thinks raising the debt ceiling must mean that we're uh, running up our debt. I wanted to go ahead and briefly mention something about this debt debacle. Now, you probably have heard many individuals talk about this. You've probably heard some of the same individuals talk about it on a daily basis. Now, keep in mind, these are people that are supposed to be investment experts, but they seem to be just blabbering every day about a soap opera situation in Washington. Of course, Peter Schiff is one of the individuals that comes to mind, right? Uh, and you wonder why he doesn't know what's going on, right? The guy is a media mouthpiece. That's all he is. Guys like me don't have time to blabber about these trivial things. I haven't talked about this because I don't really pay attention. You're paying attention to this stuff. Why? Because you watch the TV. You're patched into the media. You're brainwashed. I don't pay attention to this garbage. I only pay attention to things that really matter. And the fact is, this is all theatrics, it's all grandstanding, it's a complete joke. Now, the unfortunate reality, though, however, is that it does matter in terms of the overall end result, but I can't determine what's going to happen, right? So why should I pay attention to the theatrics? The most important issue is this, can America pay its debt? Of course it can. There is no debt crisis, that is a lie. Anyone who tells you that America has a debt crisis is either an idiot or a liar. I think that most of the individuals who have said that the U.S. has a debt crisis, they're, they're just basically idiots. Okay, so for those of you who do not know, the debt ceiling is a legal limit pertaining to the amount of money that Washington is permitted to borrow. The reason why you've been hearing about it lately over the past few years is because of the financial crisis and the ensuing economic implosion. Now, of course, this economic implosion, which was caused by Wall Street, resulted in the government having to borrow a lot of money. In addition to, of course, the TARP, I'm talking about the stimulus package. And so, of course, that raised our debt. The question becomes, at what point do we trim down on this? And this is why there's been this big fight over the debt ceiling, because you have the uh, Republicans who have been influenced by a lot of extremists, including these Tea Party wackos who are basically a front for fascism, controlled by corporations and the wealthy elite, that are against the you know any type of debt, raising the debt and so forth. The point is, though, is that no one addresses the main issue as to why the debt is higher and who's responsible and what we can do about it. For instance, when you measure debt, it's not just measured in terms of total dollars, but most often it's measured in terms of as a percentage of GDP or gross domestic product. Now, obviously, when you have a major economic downturn, the GDP is going to be low for quite some time. You're not going to be getting full capacity out of the economy. So if the GDP is low, of course, the debt to GDP ratio increases. And if you add upon that more debt from the economic stimulus package and other types of stimulus plans, then of course the debt's going to be high. 
But we must ask ourselves where and why this debt is, is rising. It's not because of the economic stimulus package. We've got trillions of dollars that we have spent towards these useless wars. No one questions that in Washington now, do they? You have this showdown with the radical portion of the Republican Party who want to try and use extortionist tactics, terroristic tactics on the government, on the people of America to try and remove Obamacare. Have we ever seen the Republicans or Democrats use these same tactics to get us out of the war in Iraq or Afghanistan? No, of course not. Why are the American people not raising this issue? Think about that for a minute. You've got people who you have voted for, if you're a Republican, who are in Washington, who are threatening to cause economic damage to our country. Because if we do default, and that is possible, it will cause irreversible damage to the U.S. economy. It will cause a loss in confidence somewhat. It will cause hesitancy, uncertainty with regards to foreign investors. It will cause some problems. And the most unfortunate thing is it's not necessary. It's not like we don't have the money to pay, right? We can just print the money. It's not a big deal. The, uh, the wackos out there, the gold bug extremists who are brainwashed by these morons like Peter Schiff, they're going to come back to me and say, well, we can't just keep printing. We're going to debase the currency. How long do you think we can print? I mean, seriously, don't be stupid, please. Look at yourself in the mirror. You've become a puppet. You've become a puppet of doomsday charlatans. We can keep printing. You know why? Because we have the petrodollar. Our dollar is backed by oil and commodities. And that is a fact. That's what runs the world. You never hear that by anybody else but me. Why is that? Why is that? Am I the only person smart enough to know this? No, of course not. It doesn't take a genius to, to understand the relevance of the petrodollar. You see, but if the charlatans reminded you of the petrodollar, then their whole game would be up. And of course, the people on the side of Washington, they don't want to remind people about the petrodollar because they don't want to remind the world that they're getting fucked in the ass by the petrodollar. The U.S. is the strongest, most powerful economy. The U.S. has the strongest, most powerful military. And we have the petrodollar. There's absolutely no chance of us defaulting unwillingly. We can pay our bills. The U.S. dollar is not only backed by the petrodollar trade, that is, you have to have the dollar everywhere in the world to buy oil and all commodities on the international exchanges. And the international exchanges is where all the volume of buys and sells takes place. That's where the massive buys and sells takes place. You can't buy cocoa or gold or coffee or orange juice or steel or copper or lead without the dollar. You have to have the dollar. You can't buy it with the yen. You can't buy it with the euro. I've emphasized this point for several years, and some people just still don't get it. This is why we invaded Iraq. This is why we want to go into Iran. It's about the petrodollar. This is why we have had hostilities towards Venezuela. So we have no chance of defaulting due to the inability to pay our bills. We have a chance of defaulting due to the political games that are being played. But the dollar is also backed by, of course, the taxing authority, the taxing power of the U.S. government. So I just wanted to make that point clear. Now, you know, the problem is, is that you've got these individuals in Washington who are threatening to basically send the U.S. in a recession and cause potentially a lot of problems throughout the globe. These individuals who are fighting, who are refusing to raise the debt limit, who are trying to use this as an opportunity as a way to forward their political agendas, they're basically guilty of treason. I want you to understand that if you're a Republican, you need to vote these people out of office. They could potentially cause you to lose your job or your home or to suffer huge losses in your retirement plan. You understand that? So the vast majority of Republicans are probably saying, yeah, yeah, fight for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut down the government, get rid of Obamacare, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you stupid? You could lose your job if these idiots decide to not raise the debt ceiling by the 17th of October. They're playing games with the fate of our economy, with the fate of your job, your home. Do you understand that? Wake up and smell the coffee. Get your head out of the soap opera asshole and wake up. 
these people are playing with your fate. The Republicans are just trying to win votes. They're trying to come out and look like the Superman. But if they want to look like Superman, why didn't they come out and use these tactics to get us the hell out of Iraq? So many states are looking to, to scrap their pension plans, their public pension plans. And they're saying, well, we don't have the money. We have to make cuts. Wait a second here. Who caused this mess? Why are pensions not being funded? Why are they underfunded? It's because of the economic mess created by Wall Street. It's because of the 0% interest rates. The banks are to blame. The banks need to fund these pensions. This is what your congressmen, your senators need to be fighting for. Now, in terms of Obamacare, it's clearly a disaster. There's no doubt about it. But you cannot go through and try and play extortionist tactics. There's other ways to deal with Obamacare. I don't like Obamacare, but as I've mentioned before, our health care sucks. We're in deep trouble with Obamacare or without Obamacare. You Democrats out there that think Obamacare is so great, what does it matter if you can afford health insurance if you can't afford to pay your medical bills? That's the problem. Obamacare has not addressed the problems within our health care system. The big problem, the single largest problem is the cost. So sure, go ahead and pay for your health insurance. But when it comes time to pay that 20% copay on your cancer diagnosis, how the hell are you going to pay that? If anything, I could argue that Obamacare is much worse because it forces everyone into this extortionist healthcare mafia system. So in other words, you're forced to pay for medical insurance now. Never mind that you will never be able to pay a 20% copay on some type of chronic medical disease that you might get. You're going to have to pay for the health insurance. You need to wake up and stop listening to all these clowns in the media. Sometimes we all need just a little push, right? Sometimes we all need someone to remind us. That's why I'm telling you this in this video here. I want to remind you about the real issues at hand. This is all about playing games, getting political power, and they're not addressing the real issues. Why is Wall Street not paying for this collapse that they caused? No one's in jail. They're causing the, the pension plans to become underfunded. They're the res ones responsible for all of these budgetary problems. And of course, Obamacare, it's not even an issue. The real problems in health care are not being addressed. Obamacare just basically ties people into our health care mafia. It doesn't help you or I. And it doesn't even help the impoverished person who may be able to receive health insurance now. It really doesn't help them because at the end of the day, who's going to pay their 20% copay for their $2 million cancer diagnosis? Who's going to pay that? Now, if you're going to tell me that Washington's going to pay that, if taxpayers are going to pay that, then I'm telling you that we're in deep trouble. Now, I don't know the details of how that's going to work. Taxpayers are obviously going to be subsidizing the health insurance of very low-income individuals, but what happens to their copays, right? So the problem is, is our health insurance is a joke. We don't have real health insurance. Real health insurance means you pay a premium somehow, either in taxes or in fees, and there are no exclusions. There are no copays.